tree diagrams are a type of model. The lines show evolutionary relationships. The nodes show when species lineages diverged from a common ancestral population. Species whose lineages split more recently are more closely related than species whose lineages split farther back in time. Trees are constructed on the basis of scientific evidence. This tree incorporates evidence from anatomy, behavior, geography, and fossils. Because of gaps or conflicting evidence, there is some uncertainty about exactly when the lineages split. For example, anatomical and geographic evidence show that polar bears and brown bears are very closely related. But because their lineages split relatively recently and within a short span of time, there is little fossil evidence of transitional forms. This makes determining the timing of the split a challenge. To resolve some of this uncertainty, scientists have to look more closely at other kinds of evidence, like DNA. All living things have a set of DNA instructions. Segments of DNA, called genes, specify how to build an individual. DNA is made up of long strands of building blocks. When mutation generates a new DNA variation in an individual, it can pass to their offspring. Over multiple generations, DNA variations can add up. When a lineage diverges, each one begins to accumulate different DNA variations. Over time, and as lineages become increasingly isolated from one another, their DNA becomes more and more distinct. Scientists have calculated the rates at which certain types of DNA changes accumulate. They can compare differences in a segment of DNA between living species to estimate when that DNA segment began to diverge. A tree based on the differences in a gene is called a gene tree. Scientists can use gene trees to help improve their estimates of when species split. To make a tree more accurate, it's important to incorporate multiple gene trees. Species have many genes, and each gene has its own evolutionary history. Some genes change very slowly. Often these genes code for proteins with essential functions, which don't change much over time. Trees for these genes might suggest a more recent time of divergence. Other genes change quickly and accumulate many variations. This might be true of genes that influence traits that are different between lineages, like fur color or hunting behavior. Trees for these genes might suggest a more distant time of divergence. For most genes, rates of change are somewhere in the middle. By collecting this information for many genes, scientists can build a composite diagram made up of many gene trees. This type of tree is called a cloudogram. Because it contains so much more information than a single gene tree, a cloudogram more accurately shows the timing of a species split, while also emphasizing the uncertainty in any particular timing estimate. Yet for brown bears and polar bears, this diagram still tells only part of the story. While most genes are found on DNA inside the cell's nucleus, a small number are found in cell structures or organelles called mitochondria. As with genes in the nucleus, mitochondrial DNA changes through mutation. As it's passed down over many generations, changes accumulate. And it's possible to compare the mitochondrial DNA from living species to make gene trees. Compared to nuclear DNA, mitochondrial gene trees suggest that polar bears and brown bears diverged much more recently. So which DNA evidence is right? It turns out they both are. While nuclear DNA comes from both parents, mitochondrial DNA is inherited differently. It passes from the mother through her egg to offspring. Mitochondrial DNA holds information only about the maternal side, going back many generations. Looking at both lines of DNA evidence has helped scientists gain a more detailed understanding of how and when the polar bear and brown bear lineages split. Nuclear DNA suggests that brown bears and polar bears began to diverge about 600,000 years ago. The mitochondrial DNA would have begun to diverge at this time, too. But then, about 100,000 years ago, a female brown bear and a male polar bear interbred. The brown bear's hybrid daughters 
carrying her mitochondrial DNA, joined the polar bear population and interbred with them. Her brown bear nuclear DNA came along too, but it was diluted with each generation, and little sign of it remains in the polar bear population today. Scientists think the females in the population that had the older polar bear mitochondrial DNA were less successful at reproducing, but the brown bear mitochondrial DNA continued to pass successfully from mother to daughter. That's why today, many generations later, polar bears have the mitochondrial DNA that came more recently from a brown bear. When they include many genes and multiple types of DNA, cloudograms can reveal details about the speciation process, such as how long it has taken certain species to diverge, say, because of ongoing mixing and interbreeding. Also, it might say something about how likely certain lineages are to recombine, given genetic compatibility between species. This story shows why it's important to look at multiple types of evidence, both DNA and others, to understand evolutionary relationships. Each kind may tell a different part of the story, and all types of evidence are part of species' evolutionary history.